This is an update video for a screen power lithium phosphate 36 volt battery installation that we did several months ago. Uh, since I installed the battery, I had to get a better battery meter because the one that came with the golf cart was for lead acid and it wasn't really showing me the correct levels of the battery. Um, one thing I noticed also is that after strapping the battery down, you can see there's a little bit of a gap between the battery. I may have to adjust the straps so they're not tightening on the, different, on the incorrect spots that cause that to happen. I just take a rubber hammer and kind of pound it back and it closes, but I just noticed that uh, that has occurred. The battery works fine other than that. So back to the meter, I installed a meter with a little coil. You can see it right here. And uh, what that does is measure current and it's connected with the positive side of the battery. And I run a cable from that. This black cable right here runs into the back of the coil up to the front of the cart where we have the meter. And it measures amp hours, voltage, and will tell you approximately what the battery level is. You can see the model there, H56C is a coulometer. Same what I had before, which it was a coulometer, but it was not made for lithium phosphate batteries. It was only made for lead acid. So this one has been working very well. As you can see, I'm down about 56%. Uh, I've been driving it for about three days after I fully charged it. Uh, I would say probably went about 15 miles so far. Um, so I still have 56%. I'm going to keep running it down until uh, probably down to about 20%. And if you look here, you'll see the battery voltage is 39.4. This is a 36 volt golf cart, so that's well above what the battery uh, needs to be to run the motor. I think it needs can go down as low as 30 volts before it shuts off, if I remember correctly, uh, looking at the controller specs. But I would not want to get that close to it, so I'd probably want to run it down to the most, maybe 34 volts. But we'll see how this meter works when we get down lower and then decide what we want to do. This is the uh, Coulomb meter that I purchased online. 400 amps. It has a coil instead of a resistor that you put in series with the battery terminals. I didn't want to put that in series with the battery terminals, so I just found this one that has a coil which goes around the cable, and that way I could connect the cable directly to the terminal of the battery and not have any loss. I had to purchase a 2.5 meter shielded cable here uh, because I needed to run it, that cable to the meter that's mounted on the dash and I printed a little plate on the 3D printer to mount the, the meter panel. And here's some more information on the battery. Monitor coulomb meter. Uh, you know, it's just it's used for all kinds of things, but really it's just for the battery, different voltages it accepts, including life, PO, lead acid, lithium, lithium cell type batteries. And the screen power is a lithium, or I should say a lithium phosphate battery. And there's some information about the uh, specs on it. Tells you what size hole cut out to put in there. And then these are the instructions or the settings you, you set. I think I pretty much left them all the same as they were stock. Uh, I didn't set the low voltage alarm or the low capacity alarm. I just left that at zero. The default value, I didn't set the temperature. It allows you to fine tune the Voltage, if it's not the same voltage as what you measure with the meter, but in my case, it was pretty much right on. Um, 
it may be 0.1 volt difference, which I'm not going to worry about. Um, and you can adjust other items as well, where it says fine tuning. Uh, you can also calibrate it if you need to, for some reason, which I didn't need to. Um, and then the 11 CA effective battery capacity. It's put in there for my battery is 100 amp hours. So you have to type that in. And then if you want, you can put in the voltage uh, that reads 100%. When it's higher than that voltage, it will read 100%. I think for the lithium 36 volt battery, it was 43.9. I think it ended up being around 41.3 or something after uh, a while. And there's just some other settings there for unlocking the menu or locking the menu. And if you want to reset everything back to the default value, you would adjust that 14 DF line. Uh, so it goes on to show you some pictures and dimensions. So if you want to mount it, and then there's the coil that goes on the cable going into the battery so it can monitor the current flow and give you a more accurate reading of how much the battery is actually using. This example is a 260 amp hour battery and it looks like it's a 24 volt because 27.9 would be about right for fully charged and that would be 100%. And of course nothing's being used so it's not showing any wattage or anything. This is when it just was charged. Um, and it's showing you some of the settings. One little thing that was tricky about this is you have to press the settings button to get that menu and then you go up and down and the up arrow really allows you to go up, but the down arrow just doesn't allow you to change things down. So you have to kind of go through the cycle counting upwards and select the value you want. And you can't really like go up and down, you just go one direction. So really the down arrow is to go to the next line down. That's about it. Um, the up arrow will allow you to go to the next line up. But if you want to adjust settings, you press that uh, settings button to get to the parameter you want to adjust. And then you use the up arrow to adjust it. It's a little thing to remember when you're, you're using it. it. Took some learning. There's a really nice example of how to connect it. And like I said before, you want to make sure you put that coil in the correct direction. Um, I believe it's pretty much how I connected it up to the battery with the connector facing out the back of it, uh, you know, going into the battery plus terminal. And the load would be your motor. And of course the charger would be your charger when you connect it up. So it's a really good example of how to use it. So, so far I'm really pleased with this meter. Gives you a cutout right there of, if you want to make a panel to mount it, you can pretty much cut it to those dimensions in millimeters and then pop it right in. It's got a little snap in. Um, I ended up getting the 400 amp because of a golf cart and I didn't know exactly how many how much current it would draw. So I wanted to be on the safe side. So I just went to the 400 amp version, which wasn't that much more money. And so far it's worked fine. So anyway, gives you hope this gives you some information about this meter. If you end up buying a lithium battery, lithium phosphate battery, um, you're going to need one of these meters to get a good accurate reading if you don't have one already.